what gets you up in the morning? Um, wow, what gets me up in the morning is that I might learn something new from somebody or see something that might inspire me in general, like anything. Like I can, I have so many conversations with random people that I learn, I try to learn as much as I can and, or just have a conversation and might tell someone something. That's pretty much it. What yeah. gets you angry? People's intentions. Uh, so it can be, you can tell someone something positive, negative or constructive. Uh, but if you have bad intentions with what you're doing, you can pick up on that. And I think it's people's intentions towards each other or anyone. Mm -hmm. for any moment so you'll have a problem even if someone's acting right but if you think it's false or yeah tra uh, transparent empty hollow yeah I, I think people need to just be aware of their own they have to have confidence in themselves and aware of their their personal to understand if someone has good intentions though so it's kind of like you have to look inward to understand someone's what they're trying to do know thyself yeah what do you still hope to achieve oh man <laughs> hope to achieve I've, I don't know I've done I've done a lot of stuff I would like to get I would like to just write one song I think uh, that people would just at least remember me by I guess I know that's a, like, a little strange but I just want to write one that and I've written a lot but I'd like to write one that people would recognize me for your yeah. masterpiece yeah you're listening to artist with Brian I'm Brian, here with... Uh, Jared Garcia. Jared is a psych soul pop musician. Yes. Good to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. See, I love the podcast, it's great. Oh, sweet, you're yeah. a fan, I love it. You got that buttery voice, man, I like oh, it. <laughs> so flattered, thank you. Season three of Artists with Brian is brought to you by howtoplaypoker.video. Learn to win money free. Visit howtoplaypoker.video now. Jared, how long is too long for a psych soul pop song intro? Two minutes. Really? Oh, You'll yeah. You'll go all the way to like 159 and you think that's okay. If the tones are there and the mm -hmm. music is there, I'll let it go. So if you have a 90 second intro, how long does the track need to be then? I don't know, doesn't, there's no structure to it. If you, no. if you want it to be, you know, 90 seconds long or 40 seconds long or two minutes long and then you want to throw a verse and a quick hook and end it you can end it in two two minutes three minutes you know that's my opinion how long is the intro on panama red panama red i think has got a 45 second intro 45 second and then greedo killer has a 40 second intro yeah i listen to greedo killer yeah and it really rolls in slowly You're very slow and then i was sold when your vocals came in oh thank that's you that's you right yeah okay people got to listen to that more we'll talk more Later in the show, have you sold any records to date? Have I sold any records today? I don't think so. No, <laughs> no but streams. Not. You have like 5K streams on Greedo yeah. Killer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you've risen above the muck. Like 99% yeah. of songs get downloaded zero times. Yeah, um, I just kind of like stopped thinking about selling music. I, I think of it more as like we need, I think artists need to just like go with the wave. I think people need to figure out and get creative with getting streams or just putting out music and learning how to market better, even myself included. Um, I There's friends of mine that I speak to that how they market their music, and um, I'm fascinated by it. Uh, I just, I'm just i still learning about it before I even start doing it, though. Mm. Yeah. So you're still focused on the project, the work itself? Yeah. Hubba, Hubba was always been about... Um, it's always been about just being a recording project. Uh, people want us to play live and do stuff, but uh, Lucas and I, we understand it as... We want people to hear the music first before ever doing it live. I want people to hear what I what my intention was with it. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what tools I have to use to get the tones I want or the sounds I want. And that's the point of Hubba right now. How long has Hubba been uh, going on? Oh, man. Uh, active time, like when Lucas and I are in the same orbit, because um, we're both kind of space cadets sometimes, um, probably about two years. Uh but we had been talking about it for about three and a half, four years. And wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. How much more time do you feel like you need to develop and grow before you uh, play a show? Um, well, we have about, we have so much music. You do? Tons. So I'm only seeing two singles on Spotify. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's the library? We have 35 songs. Whoa. Um, a lot of them need 
a couple more parts. Uh huh. And then now it's just about him and I picking and choosing what we want to use. Mm-hmm. Um, Lucas, though, he's very interesting. Um, he doesn't like to go backwards. So once he once we put a song on the shelf and we're like, okay, this is good. I'll jump in the studio and work on something. He doesn't like to go backwards. He's like, I just want to write something new. So I have to balance that and mm-hmm. then uh, balance finishing tunes as well. Um do you like to go backward? I love it. You love it? Yeah, I can also even take pieces. I've always done this where I can take pieces from old songs. And if you're stuck in another one, you can kind of swing these parts in. And Panama Red has like a moment like that in the middle of the song where it kind of like shifts into a whole new, another tune for about a minute and a half. Mm-hmm. And then it swings back into the song. So we do that all the time too. Yeah. So maybe it's a perfect partnership. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. He fills in all my gaps. So, yeah. Amazing. What were you like in high school? Oh, man. Uh, insecure. Uh, I was an athlete. Uh, kind of a black sheep in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, um, not quiet. I was also the guy who threw all the parties. Hmm. Um, I was a mixed bag, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What sport? Basketball. Whoa. Yeah, I played JV as a freshman, mm-hmm. uh, varsity as a sophomore, and then quit my junior year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Which school? A Santa Fe High. Oh. And I, I, I knew a guy or came across a guy named Elliot who averaged 17 points there. Does oh. that ring a bell? Like five, six years ago? Mm-mm. No. Okay, you went there prior to that. Yeah. Neat. What position did you play? Well, I was big for Santa Fe, so I yeah. so I played power forward and small forward. Very cool. Yeah, Elliot did too. Mm-hmm. I wish I knew your last name, Bud. Yeah, there's your shout out. So, what advice would you give to your 15 year old self? Um, don't try to please everybody. Don't forget to uh, speak your truth. Don't forget to always. Um, don't forget to, even if it makes people mad, just to say your opinion, but then listen to what people have to say afterwards. Mm-hmm. Somewhere along the line, I lost that. But my dad taught me that when I was a kid. And then I think I lost that like in my 20s somewhere. And then I had to like relearn it. Wow. Recently. Yeah. I like that duality. Speak your mind and listen. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's take a break for a little game. We always do this at some point in the show. Uh, the game is called One of the Top Five on Spotify. Oh, I'll explain no. the rules in a second, but first we'll raise the stakes. This is a brand new copy of The Play by Edward Albee entitled Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? The New York Times said towers over the common run of contemporary plays. The Village Voice said an irreplaceable experience, a crucial event in the birth of contemporary American theater. This is one of my favorite plays. I it's love simple it. to read. You could read it in an afternoon. The rules of the game are you need to name the artist and the track title of one of the top five streamed songs of 2021 on spotify so okay. there's five in the mix i'll give you i'll give you one hint i guess the, for order of magnitude the mm-hmm. number one on the list had 1.1 billion streams so okay. we're talking big names we're talking international in some cases okay so you gotta name just one one of the artists and the song title to win who's afraid of virginia Woolf. Of 2021? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I really want that book. Problem is, I don't listen to, like, top, probably top 100 or top 20 mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. Definitely Cardi B. Final answer? Uh, yeah, Cardi B. This has to, has to be there. But then I don't I don't know any of her music at all. Okay, Cardi B is not on the list. Okay. Dua Lipa rounds at the list at number five. Have you heard of her? Mm-mm. With the song Levitating. We've also got Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber at number three with the song Stay. Have you heard that? Yeah, I've heard that one. Okay. okay. Little Nas X with Call Me By Your Name at number two. I don't listen to Little Nas, but I know of him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that like Western rap. Yeah. Very interesting song yeah. from a couple years ago. And then Olivia Rodrigo is on twice, number one and number four with driver's license and good for you respectively see i have never heard her i the only way i would have gotten won this game is by guessing justin bieber and i wouldn't have known the title see i have a lot of friends and everyone's posting their spotify stuff right now yeah exactly yeah and like 
I have a lot of friends. I'm just been obsessed, like looking at their Spotify and seeing how different they are. But everyone has like Cardi B in their top. Oh, somewhere. I see. And I'm that like, was a good to, guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder if she's like number six. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> how did you come up with the name Hubba Music? That was my nickname growing up. Really? And my closest friends still call me that. And my a lot of my family members that I'm really close with still call me that. The basketball team call you that? No. Oh no. Those so guys, they weren't your closest friends? No, no. I was actually like I said, like a black sheep. Like people yeah. like. I did a lot of stuff right and I um, I paid attention and I followed all the rules and I was very technically sound and that's what gave me my advantage. And my friends or my teammates hated that. They mm. hated that the coaches like that. And I kind of, was, I didn't feed into it, but I, I'd let them too. I never stuck up for myself. So, wow. Yeah. So what did Hubba mean when they called you it? Um, in my family, we have so many cousins mm-hmm. and they're all Johns. I'm not a John, but like John Michael, John john justin john whatever um so i think to differentiate each other we gave each other nicknames Mm -hmm. and they gave me hubba because i was a really chubby baby and there's like hubba hubba yeah i think that too i might be cute chubby yeah i think that's what they were going for okay and then uh your partner your music partner oh lucas romero yeah Yeah. what did lucas think of that name because it's your nickname and he's your partner yeah so when we were um i think what it started was like I feel bad about saying this, but I had to like kind of sell him on it. We were sitting in a room trying to think of names and we couldn't come up with like really good names. Um, I told him like, well, I always wanted to do a project with my nickname Hubba. And he said, and he was kind of not against it, but not for it. And I just kind of told him, I was like, well, think about it. Hubba is like a dead word. I was like, hunk is kind of like a dead word. I said, I kind of want to like take a dead word and kind of bring it back to life. Mm. And then once he heard that, he's like, yeah, like a dead word. And then he started saying hubba. And he's like, and then he kind of felt it and it kind of had like a beat to it to him. And then that was it. Yeah. Yeah. I like the rhythm of hubba music as a brand. I think it's a great brand. You've got that yellow icon on Instagram. Mm-hmm. The handle is at hubba music. Uh, uh, at hubba underscore music. Okay. H-U-B-B-A underscore music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it works. I actually had to dig for, I don't know, five minutes to find out your name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you're really putting the brand forward, mm-hmm. which I think is clever. Yeah. Uh, does it match the aesthetic, Absolutely. the sound of the music to, to this point? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, uh, when we were getting the logo designed by this guy named Tony, he's called Tony Designs. I don't think he's got, he's got a very interesting Instagram. It's hard to find, but, um, he asked me, what are you guys looking for? I said, well, I want it to feel comic booky and I want it to feel like a, like a movie almost like a movie poster. Yeah. yeah. So he gave us two logos. Uh huh. One is like a villain, like really evil looking one. And then he gave us that one. And I thought that was perfect. So yeah. I just went with that. It's got, well, it's got like an Americana pop yeah. vibe to me. And you're okay with that. Absolutely. Like American cinema. Mm-hmm. Okay, beautiful. Since embarking on your journey as a musician, what has been your biggest disappointment? As a musician? Yeah. Mm, biggest disappointment? I don't know, man. I think um, watching people give up has been my biggest disappointment i have a lot of really talented friends that myself included i gave up for three years Mm -hmm. i i I was done but um i had a lot of friends that very talented still super talented that just don't make music at all anymore at least play Mm -hmm. and i think that's disappointing yeah yeah why'd they stop i think we people stop for a lot of different reasons yeah um I think if you if your intentions are to be famous and make a lot of money and meet chicks, like it's nearly impossible. Yeah, or well, that's your intention, so you're only going to attract that. Yeah. Um, and who doesn't go through that? Mm-hmm. Myself included. But um, that's one reason. Other reasons, life kind of takes over. Financial situations take over. Mm-hmm. Family situations, personal people change. But why'd you come back after the three year break? I had a mental breakdown. Yeah. I um, was working at the Plaza Cafe um, and I had been running that restaurant for a while and uh, nothing wrong with the Plaza. I just, I gave it my all and um, I think it broke me down mentally. I went through a really rough, not like a rough breakup, but I was with this girl for six years and we broke up and uh, I had gained a lot of weight. I uh, was unhealthy. Um, so I took a break from, I gave up because I, but I mean, what get, what brought me back was that, like, I got put on leave, and then in that time from leave, um, just kind of rediscovering what I wanted to do. I had already been, like stopped playing for a few years, and that was it. I just started like listening to music again, playing music again, picking up my guitar, and kind of brought me back. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You reconstructed yourself mm-hmm. through artistic expression. Yeah. I've heard that before. Yeah. I've lived through that. And uh, I expect to live through it a few more times. Right. Uh, that's the artist's way. Since embarking on your journey as a musician, what's been the most pleasant surprise? Since embarking? Um, I think... I used to always think that I always believe that people have good in, like they have good intentions too. Like I think people like they're, they'll open the door to you, but to actually physically see that is insane. Um, to go on the road and meet st- random strangers and that are willing to let you sleep on their couch or their bed or even make you a cup of coffee like how you did here. Like those mm-hmm. little hospitality things, these like human to human moments and then having real conversations with people. Mm-hmm. That was the most mind blowing thing that music showed me because I, I kind of grew up in a very tight knit family. Uh Don't talk to strangers. Don't deal with people. People are bad. People are this. Yeah. And then just like see it like physically. And then being in high school, being picked on, on the basketball team, being all the stuff, all this shit. It's like, yeah. Then to see it like on the road. What were you out on the road doing? Why were you, why were you coming across kindred souls all of a sudden? Um, I was playing music. I was, you were, so yeah. you have toured. Yeah. Okay, but Hubba hasn't. Hubba toured. has not. I, I used to gotcha. play. I, I used to play in a band called Thieves and Gypsies. Uh huh. Um, and then um, through Thieves and Gypsies, I met this group out of LA called Nacosta. Mm-hmm. And Brandon Graham and Shane Graham, shout out. They just have a new group called Dream Phases, and their songs are really killer. Um, those guys brought me in. I think I played with them. Uh, I they were touring. I intercepted them. We threw a huge show. And then we threw a big after party after. And we ended up just being becoming great friends. We stayed in contact. They needed a guitar player. They called me out of the blue. And they said, do you want to come to LA and learn how to play all the songs? Wasn't a very talented musician at this time. Hmm. And I even told them. I was like, I'm not very But trained. it's because they had seen you in a very social, relaxed situation. Yeah. And then they just invited me out. And then okay. I flew out there, lived with them for a month, played music every day. Yeah. Is that how you got up to up to their standard just playing on your own i think so they also gave me a lot of freedom like Mm -hmm. they let me kind of like they showed me the parts and then they gave me freedom to just just put you in it and then um that was it and and then we went on the road we did about a 20-day tour yeah and just everywhere we went just you would meet people and they were just so kind insanely kind so kind yeah i was like can i ask what 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 was the crowd size and then i was like oh that's so yeah that's so superficial he's (laughs) I, He's I mean, meeting like a beautiful souls for yeah. the first time in his life after getting picked on in high school. Um, crowds were, um, hey, they vary. Yeah. Sometimes you play for a lot. Sometimes you play for no, for no one. But you've been around the block. I, that's kind of what mm-hmm. I was getting at. So there's Hubba waiting to mm-hmm. expose Hubba to share it. It's not fear. Mm-mm. It's uh, calculated. It's, well, it's probably intuitive and organic, but. Yeah, it's also a little bit of procrastination. Oh, really? To, 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 honestly. <laughs> But it is calculated. Like we have a plan for what we want to do. Yeah. Um, like I said, though, Lucas and I, we're when we're when we're out of orbit, and right now we're kind of out of orbit from each other. Um, when we spiral back into each other and we're ready to do it, it's like all there. Yeah. And then we'll break off again and we'll come back again. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see what you do with those 35 songs and how you present the your most favorite. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Panama Red. For a little bit okay. we'll do a little interview here interlude here so we're listening to the intro right now it just started what like the we're at second five what are we hearing we're hearing uh guitar we're hearing a very shimmery guitar kind of spooky mm-hmm. i wanted to feel like you're walking up to a spooky water like spooky ocean or sea and just that feeling of looking over like a pale blue like foggy water mm-hmm. yeah and as we get to this 45 second mark how are we transitioning um the second guitar kind of comes in we start getting really glitchy the drums start kicking in the glitchy in. yeah like offbeat like late yeah but like we kind of glitch the we we do like little glitching tricks like uh-huh. editing glitch stuff that makes nice. the guitars kind of chop up whoa yeah exciting so it's kind of like we're like waking you up out of a dream or a haze yeah i mean you have a gift for titles panama red Greedo Killer, mm-hmm. Hubba Music. Mm-hmm. I want to know what the other 33 titles are, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you doing to promote your music? You mentioned that you're a little bit, it's a little bit nascent, your promotion mm-hmm. strategy and approach. All right. But where can people find you? How can they interact right now? Well, Instagram is the best way for us. Um, 
how we promote is just we just post on our stories we'll just post uh we'll go do like a photo shoot or we'll do personal shoots we don't like to do just like random content or just hanging out or something mm. um we would like to make everything look real like a project we don't mm-hmm. want it to feel like and maybe that's a bad thing but i i've never i i enjoy putting together like scenes and outfits mm-hmm. and concepts no i think that's kind of the new wave on instagram mm-hmm. infrequent posting but high quality mm-hmm. youtube's already gotten there yeah making a vlog on youtube costs five grand now like every episode because they're go. raking in money why make it look nice it's not a it's not like a young man's game or a yeah high school student's game anymore big business big business <laughs> yeah so you can find us mostly instagram is the best way yeah uh, you can stream us everywhere um, you just type in Hubba or type in, the, I tell people the easiest way to find us is Greedo Killer. Just type Greedo Killer and we're the only song I think called Greedo Killer in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So just type Is in. Greedo a made up word? Greedo is from Star Wars. Really? Yeah. So Han Solo shoots Greedo in A New Hope. Oh, wow. And so we, we had a poster of the blaster in my old house and uh, I was like, we should write a song called Greedo Killer. Wow. Yeah. You're quite a storyteller. Have you ever thought of just doing like acoustic, unplugged singer songwriter folk? Love it. I'm actually. You do. I have a lot of like country singer songwriter folk music that I want to release. It's very sad, but it's like. Well, that would be great at like a coffee shop or gallery. Mm-hmm. Have you done it before? Have I played in the coffee shop or gallery? Yeah, before? that vibe. I have, but um, it's hard to play alone. But uh, I've been getting better. I'm going to like open mics just like secretly and just playing. Yeah. yeah. What's the best open mic to do acoustic? Because uh, that's been on my mind lately. Oh, best spot is uh, Thursdays at Leaf and Hive. Really? Yeah. Great I spot. know the guys that started that. Shout yeah. out to Leaf and Hive. We'll try to put an Instagram story for you together. Uh, Jared, what is your day job? I own a restaurant in town called Yama's Greek Rotisserie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that place. Yeah. I was so excited when you came into my house and told me that <laughs> yeah. you got to go there later today. Yeah, get some lamb. And who are you, man? Like, who do you own it with? My brother, Justin. Okay, so not your music partner, your brother. My brother. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. You're I'm not going to ask your age, but you seem younger than me, so you're fairly young and you own a restaurant. I'm 30 I'm 31. 31. A, I don't I'm age is just a number, but age is just a number, yeah. yeah. But I try to live and die young maybe. So yeah. we'll see. Yamas is so good. There's not that many places that I think are healthy and tasty mm-hmm. in Santa Fe that are also like under $10. If you want, you can spend less than $10 at Yamas, but you know, I go big a lot, 14-15. And we're trying to find like ways to even bring it better, like create deals. Like we just started doing like combos on the sandwiches and stuff. And mm. you can, that's what we always, we always believed in eating healthy and eating clean. Um, obviously there's items on the menu that's not, that aren't clean and healthy, but there's a, the vast majority is meant to just be healthy. Yeah. If people feel good after a meal, they'll come back, I believe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You really, you did your patio up for being right on Surio. So you guys tried so hard. It's a little sanctuary. Built the whole thing. Yeah. I I built the counters. You built it? Yeah. Oh, cool. Built the counters out. A lot of wood. Is it wood bench seating or just picnic tables? Picnic tables. Yeah, but you got these flower installations. Yeah, my mom uh, did all the flowers and colors. Yeah. Wow, it's a place to go, guys. Venture down Cerritos and eat some Greek. This is not a a sponsored advertisement. Brian actually loves this place. We could. We We could. could. We could work out Oh, we'd love to. So season four, (laughs) we're going to do, we're going to have two co-sponsors. I love it. Yeah. And they'll each get like a 15 second spot right after the intro or how to play poker dot video my company is being plugged Very okay cool. fun so how do you how does this interface with your hub of music project because it sounds like a nightmare running a high traffic it's um all, a casual dining restaurant it's all the same language man it is In it's all opinion. creative it's all mm-hmm. huh it's all the same language to me like it building a song or building a business are the same thing to me so it's cross training Yep. You don't feel you're away from the music when you're at Yamas? Mm-mm. Huh. The two work with each other hand in hand and inspire each other. Mm-hmm. It, but are you getting peak stress from, I don't know, putting out fires at the restaurant all the time? I do what you love. You'll never work a day in your life. Really? Yeah. This is amazing. So Jared's out here really living the dream. Yeah. The true artist's dream. Yeah. Funding, funding your art with your entrepreneurial efforts, mm-hmm. with your own creative spirit. How much time are you left with for music? There's 24 hours in a day. I'm left with plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think of lyrics while you're like Mm. cutting meat? Uh, Sometimes. Uh, Most of the time it's just I wake up and they're there. Well, sometimes I'll wake up and they're just there. Nice. Yeah. And if I remember them an hour later, then I'll write them down. Okay. Yeah. 
I see. They have to be memorable mm -hmm. for you to grab the pen. Mm -hmm. Lovely. I operate similar to that in some spaces like dialogue. Mm -hmm. Here's a fun one. Number one non-music influence to your artistic voice. Non-music. Quentin Tarantino. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so you are cinematic. Mm -hmm. How does that come out in music? Well, I guess these intros. You're uh -huh. really setting a stage. Mm -hmm. We saw Lucas and I got... Um, Lucas and I smoked some marijuana and drank some tequila and then decided to go see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh. And then uh, I think in that weird psychedelic phase, haze, we were like, oh, yeah, we should write a song that feels like this. That feels like that. Yep. I say, I say, for a couple years now, movies are going to be like music. Mm -hmm. I think the way that music videos are edited on YouTube to be like what I call impressionistic, contiguous, and musical I think films are going to trend to be released online and that audience to cross over. It, it needs to feel like ephemeral and emotional constantly, mm -hmm. I think. So it's funny that you're coming at it from the other direction. Mm -hmm. You think music is going to be like movies. Yeah. Fascinating. I'd love to hear some of your country songs. That is the genre where storytelling comes out the most, eh? I call it country. Um, I don't have any other way to describe it, mm -hmm. but it's, um, yeah, I call it country. Talk us through the etymology of uh the phrase bedroom pop man i think it's a tone i don't think it has to do with i think for one you have to be in a bedroom otherwise you're lying but i think it's a tone i think mac demarco came up with that uh that swirling vibrato and then using cheap instruments but then with you know on tape all analog um so people chase that tone i think if you have that tone in there you can call it yourself bedroom pop i don't think you i and you have to be in a bedroom obviously but <laughs> is it supposed to be one person doing all parts and recording them and arranging them you could you could but the, the project's one person it's it's work. become more the sound now in my opinion and it needs to be done in a bedroom so a residential home upstairs yeah that's kind of the vibe parents house whatever yeah basement yeah mm -hmm. what about like uh soundcloud rap that's like that. I, I guess from the socioeconomic, the age, the yeah, the production yeah. quality is that similar to bedroom pop? Just a different genre. If you're hitting the tones, yeah, uh -huh. why not? I see. Why not? Oh, cool. and you call hubba bedroom pop? I did for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but I, not anymore. Um, not so much anymore. I want to drift more into like some soul sounds. Soul psych, mm -hmm. soul pop. Yeah. Hubba Music. Visit hubbamusic.com. Check out at hubba underscore music on Instagram. If you want to book Jared, send an email to bookinghubba at gmail.com. Let's go to the clay pot for a little while. Okay. I love the clay pot. Oh, you do? I love it. <laughs> this is so cool. It took like 35 episodes to have fans. I've been I, laboring in anonymity for a while. But I, I think I've sent one or two. <laughs> You've sent questions? Yeah, I've sent one or two. I think. Wait, where at? I put on your comments. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You'll get in. Yeah. I can't believe that. I thought we weren't getting any submissions. First fan question for Jared Garcia of Hubba Music. Tomasitas, the Shed, or La Chosa? <sighs> La Chosa. Is it the food, the ambiance? Do you like to wait an hour and a half? What's what's going on there? Um, I enjoy the cocktails. Oh yeah, yeah. Margarita, um, um, Mexican meal, margarita, or whatever they got on there. Are you the type of guy that'll sit at the bar to eat dinner? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I find it so hectic. <laughs> I'm a bartender, but I hate yeah. sitting at the bar. Have you ever been to jail? Nope. I've done a lot of. I've done Good a lot for of, you. Insert I, clapping audio. I mean, I've done a lot of. Uh, I've done a lot of rock star crazy stuff, and I've never been in trouble once. And I'm very lucky. Yeah, yeah. you've always done it in like penthouse apartments or mansions, sure. in the Hollywood Hills. I yeah. mean, yeah, <laughs> in, in a different world. Yeah, but yeah. no, no way. I mean, we have a story about um, on tour. We uh, one of our friends was from Brazil, and he was he was just touring with the band. Like he was filling in a position, and he. Uh, his visa, something happened to his visa. Oh, we got our car broken into it, so his visa got stolen. So then he was on the phone with like the embassies to get um, his visa. So they're like, okay, well, you guys are coming to Chicago. Uh, come to the U.S. Embassy. We'll get you a new visa. He shows up. It was like a trap. They ended up like putting him in like a oh my God. in a room. They're gonna, but they weren't going to send to Brazil. They're going to send to Portugal. So he called us. He's like, they're going to send me to Portugal. They'll get me out of here. Mm. So we like drove up with the car 
and like he jumped out of a window onto the oh my top God. of the van and just drove off in Chicago. Like it was, <sighs> it was a crazy. So that's like one of those questionable things. Hopefully no one's hearing that. It's got to be one of the most <laughs> interesting things that happened in Chicago that year. I like yeah. to hate on that place. Yeah. I call it the fourth coast. There you go. The Rocky Mountains are the new third. Yeah. Thank you very much. Jared, have you ever spotted George R. R. Martin in town? Oh, yeah. Tons of times. Yeah. Where, I mean, where do you come across him? Because I haven't. In seven years, I have not. Um, I ran into him at a grocery store, but he used to come. My father used to own a restaurant called Cafe Sonder, and he used mm-hmm. to come and eat Cafe Sonder all the time. Sonder's still around. Mm-mm. Oh. Mm-mm. But the sign's up. Yeah. Okay. That I walk. I've done a lot of COVID and post-COVID walking around the rail yard near mm-hmm. where I live. Oh, he came to the. He used to come to the plaza too. Outdoors or the Plaza Cafe. Uh, plaza Cafe. Yeah. Yeah, he used to come, but I um, I never bother him or bothered him. Did you ever serve him? Oh yeah. How does he tip? Pretty good. He's like normal. Normal. Yeah, like That's a normal good. tipper. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be. He's not interested in fame. Mm-hmm. The most uh, you can tell he's interested in philanthropy, though. Mm-hmm. I'm fascinated by it. He tries everything, and he's had some massive successes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the cocteau and the meow wolf's its own thing. Yeah. Next fan question. Awesome. There are. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if yours is in here. It might I be. I put in five new ones recently. But maybe. Last movie you saw in a theater. I went to go see Dune. Oh, you saw Dune? Yeah. I've heard people have seen it twice. Yeah. My, I've heard people fell asleep during it. I loved it. You my, love it. My dad used to read it. He read us Dune four times as kids, and I did <sighs> not remember a word of it. But he he, all he's like one of those guys that's like, Star Wars ripped off Dune. Game of Thrones ripped off Dune. Everything ripped off Dune. And I was like, whatever, man. Yeah. And then I went and saw Dune. I was like, whoa, everyone ripped off Dune. Uh-huh. Everyone. Was it in the recesses of your memory from being read it so many times? Just, just the title. Really? Just the title. I don't know what it was. Will you give me that it was in your subconscious, that you loved the story so much because it was baked into your soul? I didn't even, I forgot there were worms. <laughs> I forgot there was sand. I forgot about the spice. Oh, Dune doesn't have sand in it? Come <laughs> yeah, on, man. <laughs> I know, I swear. Uh, we'll do two more. Okay. I'm trying to find one of the fresh ones. Here's one. The book you recommend to young artists. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. I like a title like that. Yeah. How long is it? Short, maybe 170 pages, maybe. Okay. Yeah. You could read it in a day. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a nice like vacation read. Did you ever run away from home? Uh, I have a vague memory of when I was like six years old and getting like a cartoon character, getting like a baseball bat and getting like a bandana and putting all my favorite things in it, tying it up to my bat and putting it over my shoulder and walking out of my family's house. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you go blank. And I go blank. I don't know <laughs> so you must have done like uh, acid or yeah. got knocked over the head by a stranger and drugged somewhere. Been hit by a bat in the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a new one. Okay. Final fan question for Jared Garcia. As an artist, which is more important to you? Beauty or dysfunction? Thank you, at Sunchase Moon. What's more important? Yeah, I should have said this comes this one coming from Sunchase Moon. Is uh beauty or dysfunction more important to you? Dysfunction. Yes, the guitar glitches. Mm-hmm. What else do you use to uh create like a helter skelter or like a minor vibe i don't know music very well but these are the words um like yeah man we do i uh my ears for dissonance one. yeah your yeah, ears my ears um you know i i think like a lot of people are they can people should record however they feel um i think people need to or artists or musicians need to stop being very pure in the sense of like i'm going to record on this app with this mic with this way and this is how i was taught this is how it needs to be done I need to go to a studio to do it this way, this way, and this is how it gets done. Um, just sit there with your gear, tune it to whatever your body and your ears having you do, um, having telling you to do it. Let the song speak for itself, and then just have fun with it from there. Because tone is everything, in my opinion. I think if you have poor tone, you, you can't fix that. And um, if whatever tools you have available, use them all of them and mess with them because just because a certain mic sounds a certain way doesn't mean you can't get something out of that to sound like you. So that's what I would say. Is music totally free to make these days? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got to make what you feel is right for you. Yeah. 
you absolutely should not think about income because yeah. it's free. You're unlikely to make income. Yeah. You might as well make the music you're meant to make. Yeah, just be you. Be authentically you. Stop trying to write for anyone else. Write for you. Took me long enough to figure that out, though. Took me a long time to figure that out. I only recently figured that out. Yeah. I'm probably about 18 months in. There you go. And I'm 35, <laughs> so yeah. good on you. So I'll read this. Uh, all the sticker partners here. If you live in Taos or are headed to Taos for this holiday season, visit a salty little sweet shop. One block off Taos Plaza, open six days a week. A boutique gourmet selection of cookies. And everything else you might imagine. Flavors include loco for coconut. Bucky number seven. Drop in, say hi to Holly. Check out photos of their confections on Instagram at a salty little sweet shop. Thank you to the Rail Yard Conservancy. Volunteer any Tuesday or Thursday, 10 a.m. to noon, outside. Help the local nonprofit that manages one of the city's most ecologically interesting outdoor spaces. Visit railyardpark.org for more info. Thank you to Picnic New Mexico, a catering company. Cheese plates, grazing tables for parties, special occasions, and self-care. You deserve the self-care. Let's be real. I mean, her, so her, my type writing's too small, but her, her, her arrangements are impeccable. She's using the shape of food, the color of food, the texture Beautiful. of food as, as her palette. So cool. And they're affordable. Go check out picnic underscore NM on Instagram. Thank you to Noel, the CEO of Sun Green Cleaners. Use code AWB10 for 10% off your first commercial or home cleaning. Ask for Noel, AWB10, Sun Green Cleaner on Instagram. Thank you to Cry Like Donna, Santa Fe's premier tape label. Mm. Buy an indie cassette tape as a gift today. Shop crylikedonna.bandcamp.com. Dude, cassettes are the shit. Theo Krantz. CEO of that tape label was guest number four on the show. Awesome. Thank you to Wayward Comedy. I go here every Wednesday night from 8 to 9.30. I perform. Sometimes I watch. You can perform or watch too. Sign up on a clipboard when you arrive. Wednesdays in Santa Fe at Chili Line on Guadalupe. 8 to 9.30 p.m. Wayward Comedy on Instagram. Thank you to Oasis Camper Vans. Craftsmanship so good. Most of their customers are out of state. Check out the workmanship at Oasis Camper Vans on Instagram. Thank you to Santa Fe Human Rights Alliance, our very first sticker partner ever. Visit hrasantafe.org for a list of upcoming events. And, of, and last but certainly not least, a very special thank you to Santa Fe Independent Film Club. Every Saturday, 4 to 6 at Boxcar in the rail yard, open to the public. Visit the club that makes films with its members. If you run an organization or business in Santa Fe and you would like a shout out in this segment of the show and some place on my website, DM me at artist with Brian on Instagram with spelled out all one word at artist with Brian. Yeah. That's a lot. I feel like there should be a tune, a jingle. A jingle, yeah. And these, these, all these organizations are handing out approximately 25 stickers for me. Sweet. As a way to propagate the brand. And then we'll come back for the last question. Is there anything we didn't cover that you feel like you, we need to? I don't I, I think it went very good, man. Yeah, Organic. It, went, and it was really nice. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So final question before we go. If you could change one thing about this podcast, what would it be? One thing? Man, I love it has so much cool character about it already. Like I like the the game show one. My favorite I think you should bring back uh mediocre reviews. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think you've only done like a few, but I was like, you yeah. gotta bring back mediocre reviews. I was funnier in twenty nineteen. I started to take this show maybe a little too seriously. Dude, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Okay. I like really good feedback. Three star Yelp review. That's what we call it. My favorite. Even yeah. Amazon, any review. Yeah. Three star was, Yelp review. Because it's so fun. <laughs> and they're so rare. Either okay. Five star or one star. Well, heard <laughs> from a restaurant worker to a restaurant <laughs> worker. Hurt. Brian. Sounds good. I'm Brian. Yeah. Here thank you very much. Thank you for coming no, out. Thank you. I hope people go check out your Instagram, Hubba oh, underscore music. Jeff is a With filmmaker. Oh, Sound oh, editor. Oh, Help him get oh, Music oh, producer. I dig it, man. I say we try it for season three. 
Do you want it at the beginning and the end? Yeah, I think it'll sound great. I say I say I thank you every episode at the end. Like I'll shout out your Instagram handle for your music if you have one. To cater to your taste. To cater to your taste.